The Mystery of Experiment 1006 in Poppy Playtime. His name is Huggy, Huggy Wuggy. When he hugs you, you'll never stop. Your friend Huggy, Huggy Wuggy. He'll squeeze you until you pop. Oh, Experiment 1006, isn't he wonderful? Welcome back to Horoscope, where we ask just how wonderful a murderous children's toy can be. Poppy Playtime introduced us to Huggy Wuggy, a lovable looking gangly blue monster who had landed in the hearts of children all over. In fact, no single toy in Playtime Co.'s repertoire of mascots was more well received. In addition to the vision of Elliot Ludwig, the founder of the company, an in-game display for the larger-than-life toy reads as follows, quote, With a bit of string and polyester, our lovable blue pal Huggy was brought to life. Huggy Wuggy has gone on to be Playtime Co.'s most popular and best-selling toy so far, end quote. Playtime Co. has sought to create a toy that could hug you forever, and it succeeded in doing just that. However, in the latter days of the company, it seemed this specific phrase took on a far darker meaning. So if you love deep dives into your favorite horror games, consider subscribing right now, because beyond this video, we still have a lot to cover in Poppy Playtime. Huggy Wuggy, dubbed Experiment 1006, the seemingly live incarnation of the toy is an absolute terror to behold. Perhaps the most unsettling piece of his appearance is just how approachable it looks, until it opens its red licorice-like lips to reveal an uneven set of razor-like teeth. Even worse still is the fact that there's yet another set beyond the first. When its jaws open wide and there's more jaws inside, that's amore. Okay, okay, sorry, that was low-hanging fruit, I know. But I digress. What kind of purpose could exist for creating such a monstrosity? Well, to start, let's deal with the fact that it's numbered as Experiment 1006. This would imply that there would be at least five other test subjects, right? We can probably safely assume that the other five numbers likely belong to Kissy Missy, Boogie Bot, Candy Cat, Cat B, and Brawn. But hold on, what about Poppy, you might ask? Considering the breadth of what we currently know, she could be numbered 1007 or potentially 0 if it's included. However, what is known is that Huggy Wuggy 1006 is considered as the prototype, after which the others are modeled. Now given his apparent murderous nature that has some pretty scary implications, a wide swath of which seems to be confirmed when the black tape is played near the end of the first chapter. While the dialogue in the tape is unnerving by itself, we can hear the screams of Huggy Wuggy in the background. The very same it makes when it captures a player and devours them. But what purpose could a toy have to eat, well, anything? Well, if you're eagle-eyed, you may have noticed something in the game's trailer. Hidden in some of the gray text that appears in the background, notes that Huggy and the others actually have digestive systems. Adding to this hair-raising detail is that, evidently, Huggy Wuggy differs from others in that it requires no sustenance to survive. While it's terrifying that this implies the other experiments need to devour flesh to survive, it also means that Huggy Wuggy kills for sport. This fact is chilling on its own before factoring in the creature's intelligence. The black tape makes it clear that coordination and cooperation are well within its means, and Huggy itself displays this as it seemingly lures us deeper into the factory where it might easily corner us. At first, it was a mere raise of an eyebrow, as it produced a key behind our backs to allow us into the electrical room. That concern grew into a spine-tingling chill, as we wondered where it disappeared to when we re-emerged into the hub area, and maybe strictly in my experience, became an all hell no when I saw its stuffed arm slither behind a closed door like a serpent. Ultimately, Huggy Wuggy led us to the make-a-friend area of the factory, and cornered us, our only means of escape being the series of conveyor belts within the walls, meant to transport completed toys to other areas of the complex. This horrifying experience was the thing of nightmares, ultimately dropping us on a catwalk with nowhere to go. Quick thinking with a grab pack ultimately, or at least temporarily, saved our skins. But wait, was that blood we just saw? Throughout our journey through Playtime Co., we come across areas painted with blood, or at least some sort of red substance, as if the area had very well been lifted out of a slasher film. Now, we've spoken before about theories regarding the substance itself and how it may all tie back to the red poppy flower. Be sure to check out that video if you haven't already. But another interesting facet of these scenes is the presence of toy parts. This would seem to imply that perhaps Huggy Wuggy has hunted down other toys that were granted life through Playtime Co.'s experiment is Huggy Wuggy completely indiscriminate in its killings outside of the thrill of the kill? We don't know quite for certain, but we do know that like these others, Huggy Wuggy bleeds. Oh, if it bleeds, we can kill it. And we do, potentially. Probably? 1006 was hit with a pretty big crate and had a rather unceremonious fall thereafter. This is, of course, where the first chapter leaves us with regard to the status of Huggy Wuggy. 
Is it alive? We just don't know. Another potential detail is that Huggy Wuggy was doing all of this, simply to lead us into encountering Poppy herself. Remember, the black tape noted, not only coordination, but cooperation as well. It very well could be that Poppy was in the driver's seat of this entire ordeal, or at the very least, Huggy Wuggy was willingly working with her. Speaking of Poppy, with regard to the toys being somehow brought to life, there is some potential indication that she may be, in fact, Stella Graber, the woman featured in the pink tape found in the Make a Friend location. Stella's implied desire to avoid growing old and wish to provide children with the same joy she experienced with toys when coupled with the fact that they share the same voice would indeed seem to paint this picture. With that in mind, does that mean that all the toys being brought to life are in fact being converted from human beings, employees, or otherwise? I sincerely wonder who might have been sacrificed to bring Huggy Wuggy into the land of the living. Playtime Co. Huggy Wuggy. Poppy. This all seems to be some terrible twist of irony, given that these toys were all created to provide comfort for children. I guess, at the end of the day, a geyser of blood is just as warm as a hug, right? At the present, we are absolutely left with more questions than answers surrounding Playtime Co. and their very illegal line of experimentation. Right now, it isn't even clear if we've seen the last of Experiment 1006, or if it will re-emerge in some other dark corner of the factory as our adventure continues. Do you think that was the end of Huggy? Or is this merely the tip of the Poppy Playtime iceberg? Let me know in the comments below, subscribe if you enjoyed this, and until next time, cheers.